This is Nick Basley from Film Snobbery. I'm here at the Orlando Film Festival. I'm here at the Plaza Cinema Cafe, and today I'm here with... Mariana Helmond. Hi, Mariana. What, uh, what film are you here with today? I have The Aspirin Papers. And what, what is The Aspirin Papers about? Um, the Aspirin Papers is a feature film based on a novella by Henry James, mm -hmm. and it is about a publisher who is looking for the papers of a poet and he finds the muse of the poet is still alive and he basically tries to swindle her for these valuable papers. Dear Miss Juliana Bordereau, I have for years been wholly and faithfully dedicated to poetry and none more than that of the great poet, Jeffrey Asper. says there are no papers. But you're ignoring the internal evidence. Why don't you just ask her to rent you a room? I'd have to refer you to my aunt. Your aunt? Well, who's she? Miss Bordero. You may have as many rooms as you like if you're willing to pay the price. Do you think it's right to rake up the past? Depends on how much pleasure I get from you. Pleasure? There is no pleasure in this house. There's a man who wrote to her recently. He also wanted her papers. She said he was the devil. Is that what she talks to you about? This is turning out to be quite a drama. be afraid of if I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> And I know that you said this is the source material is based off of something else, but wh how did you discover this and w w you know, what drove you to make this into a film? Um, it was actually, my, I co-wrote this with my mother who found the story. She, she read the novella, loved it, and decided that uh, for a first feature for me to make, it was intimate enough that because it's basically three characters in a house. Mm -hmm. So we thought it was good material t that could actually be made. Um, we adapted it together, and then we shot it in Venezuela, which is where we're both from. And when when you were casting for the movie, um, did you you know were you you've obviously when you you've read the uh, the the novella, mm -hmm. did you already have something in your head as far as the look or the feel, the attitude of the characters? And when you when you were casting, did it take you long to kind of find someone who fit that mold? Um, of course, when you're writing, you you have very definite images of actors, sometimes even names that you think, oh, it would be great if we could have. But um, when it came to casting, it was very, um, we were very open in terms of getting who we could get, who was, who was right for the part. And um, in one of the characters, we actually even cast very much against type, which is a very interesting concept to work with. Mm -hmm. um, but her range as an actress was is really interesting to me, so we went ahead. Now, are there any benefits or challenges, either one, that you found when you were um, in filming in Venezuela? Well, the benefit to shooting in Venezuela, part the first thing is the location. It's a stunning, um, stunning beach town on the Caribbean coast. Um, and then there are other things like it, it definitely helped my budget to be shooting there, um, although I did bring a 
a lot of American crew with me. I partnered with a local production company, so we were able to put together um, a really great team. And um, but I think location is is it was is the main benefit for Venezuela. Now, have you been to other film festivals so far with this film, or is this your first? Um, this is my second film festival. I was at um, my first was a great festival called Film Columbia up in Chatham, New York, mm -hmm. and um, actually won. It's a non-competitive festival. But I won the only award in the festival, which is the, uh, their Filmmaker Award, which was presented to me by Peter Biskind and Courtney Hunt, who was a previous recipient for Frozen River. So that was great. And my next festival is Havana Film Festival. Uh, Havana out in, uh, in Cuba. In Cuba. Oh, well, that, there, there you go. That's going to be a fun one. Uh, and, and congratulations on the, on the first award. Have you, have you been submitting to a lot of festivals, and these are just what you've got into so far? Or have you been, have you been picking and choosing? Um, yeah, I, I, my first round of festivals I submitted uh, in a rough cut version, and so um, I'm. This is really my my first round of submitting a full cut, um, and maybe some of the some of the first festivals I submitted to that I was hoping to get into. You know, I might maybe I can submit again if I if when if I'm able to resubmit a full cut. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I think that this is a very particular film and it's taking, it's going to find its audience through, um, you know, for me, it's like an honor to be at any festival that wants to see it. I mean, obviously, you, you, pick and, you do pick and choose, um, but I think the first three that have come up are really great. Excellent. And when you're, you're as a filmmaker, when you're at these fil film festivals, do you have kind of an agenda in your head as far as what you want to accomplish while you're at a film festival? Is it primarily for you? Is it for networking? Is it for business? Is it for uh, parties just to, you know, hang out and kind of get an idea of the scene? Or, or is it, you know, what, what, what's on your mind as a filmmaker when you're here? Here it's to drink Stella beer all day. That's all I do here. No, um, you I, hear that, Stella Artois? Stella. Um, no, I. I, I think it's a it's a little bit of all of the above. For me, it's it's about finding an audience for the film. It's about getting people to see the film. Um, I am hoping to get to the point where I can get the film reviewed. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it is about getting exposure. It's about um, finding distribution um, down the line. Um, yeah, I think it's I think it's a little of everything, and I. Obviously, networking, when I'm considering my next projects as I'm working on them, you never know who you're going to meet that's mm -hmm. going to be interested in what I just did. It seems like a lot of people, then their next question is, what are you doing next? So mm -hmm. having something to talk about with people I meet here is it's great. Sure. Yeah. So what are you doing next? <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing. <laughs> writing. Uh, I, I'm the, on this, as I said, I'm the co-writer. I'm the director. I am the main producer, mm -hmm. although I did have producing partners working with me, Isabel um, Barton and Andrea Roa. But I, being the producer on the first feature film that I made also makes me be very considerate about what I'm doing next because I, mm -hmm. I can't just go out and write, you know, the Titanic because I don't know how to make that. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like I have to write something that I feel like I can f figure out how to finance. Sure. So um, I'm, I'm tailoring my concepts to, towards something that I can actually make. And do you do you feel more comfortable um, writing or being behind the camera directing, or is there another position that you know even pr the producing aspect where it's more business related or anything like that? Is there one thing you enjoy more than another? I hate producing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I did it and I'm doing it because it's a necessary evil. Um, although it is wonderful to get you know to this level, but. Um, I, I love writing. I love directing. My favorite part of this is not was not raising the money or trying to get the movie out there. It's definitely being on set. I also I worked as a script supervisor for um, 10, 15 years. I've done I worked on Maria Full of Grace, The Savages, um, Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants too. I mean I've, d I've done a huge range of films as a script supervisor. So being on set 
is um, where, I've, where I've learned from working with other great filmmakers, and, um, and it's where I feel most at home. It, having worked with other filmmakers and also having, I'm sure you're a fan of films in general, you've watched a few in your time, is there anyone who, as a director, has influenced you from a style perspective or from I mean, even just a work, I mean, being on set a lot, I'm sure you see a lot of different work ethics as well. Yeah. Is there anyone in particular that, you know, you, you would call out as being uh, kind of someone that you would emulate from an industry perspective? That I've worked with or just that I've I would say either or. Yes. I mean, there's so many filmmakers. I, like, I can say that even on the Aspen papers, I watched a lot of Fassbinder just because his reputation is of being so effective on set in terms of how he constructs his shots. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that the Aspen papers is a Fassbinder-like film, but I can say that I, I drew a lot from his way of shooting. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and in terms of working, well, I also work with a, th I'm part of a theater company in New York called Labyrinth, so working with actors is a, you know, huge um, inspiration for me, um, and, and a theater ethic, I very much brought that to the set on this, um, and with directors I've worked with, yeah, I mean, there, I've, I've learned bits and pieces here and there, I, I don't even want to, like, mention specific ones, because I, I'm close to a lot of the directors I've worked with, so I don't want to single out one and not mention it, the other I've just I've gotten so much from the experience of being of working on sets nice. um, and with incredible DPs and 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 actors it's just a, it's it's all one mighty package for me now it being someone that has had all that experience on set working with other people working in the industry working by yourself out of outside of the industry do you have a any advice for other filmmakers that are trying to kind of accomplish uh, what other, these other filmmakers you've worked with have accomplished or what you're accomplishing now? Well, definitely commit to your material because if you're wanting to make a film, you're going to be in it for the long haul. I mean, it's, this is I'm already coming up on my third year with Aspern in terms of the year to raise the money, the year to get it made and edit it, and then the year to you know start getting it out there. Um, but before that, I mean, um, Isabel and I wrote this our first version ten years ago. Um, so you really have to love your project that's the first thing the second thing is surround yourself with a great team of people because filmmaking is um, it's a community project and even though you might be you know the head producer or you know the director or the head of the art department I mean you're, you're nothing without your team um, so so I'd say you know try to work on movies first of all that's like you know, that's mm -hmm. from the ground up, that's that's the best thing, that's where you're gonna learn more than from reading a book or just even from watching movies, but surround yourself with great people. Excellent. Well, I wanna thank you for taking the time to sit down with us and to and to uh, and, and talk to us about the Aspirin Papers and, 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 and I, I thank you for being here at the, the Orlando Film Festival. No, I'm so, I'm so happy and honored to be here, it's been great. Thank you and thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>